The stories contained in this podcast are the recollections of the guests we've invited onto the show. We are merely an outlet for people to share their truths, and we accept no legal responsibility for the stories contained herein. I'm Kendra Sheets. And I'm Rich Gill. And this is Enough, a podcast which aims to shine light into the darkened corners of the music industry while discussing the ways we can and should improve ourselves and in turn, our community. Welcome to another episode of the Enough podcast. I am one of your hosts, Kendra Sheets. I'm the other host, Rich Gill. And today we are going to be talking about what happens when an artist is accused of misconduct, per se. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very nice PC way of saying it. I think at this point, we've all probably come across at least someone we know of in the music scene in some way, shape or form. Someone you know has been accused in some way of misconduct. So we're going to talk today about what really happens when that person is accused. As we've talked about before in the podcast, there's not a right and wrong answer for a lot of this stuff. Obviously for the actions there are, um, but for the responses behind that, it's up to you. I mean, it's how you deal with things. And what we always try to push and to teach is to be as cognizant as possible to the community and the people around you. You want your actions to positively benefit everyone around you and create a safe and flourishing environment for yourself. So let's say someone's accused. What happens? There's a couple of different ways I think that people go about it. Denial. Um, That's a big one. That's a giant one. It's easier to not even think about it, pretend to know about it or care about it than just say, it's fuck it. It's their personal business, you know, their sex life is none of my concern. And a lot of people take this route. And obviously, based on my tone and my comments, I find it to be a bit problematic and probably not the route that I choose. And that's very similar to, uh, I don't care, I just like them for the music. Like, I'm not here to listen to their politics, or I don't care about what they do, again, what they do in the bedroom, consensually or non-consensually. I separate the art from the artist. If you're in the punk scene and you're not there to listen to their politics, what the fuck are you doing? (laughs) Yeah. And again, that's very pigeonholed into the punk scene, but like, what the fuck? On the opposite end of the spectrum, there are people who, when finding out someone has been accused of something, completely 86 them and their entire discography from their life. And those people can make kind of the opposite comment of what Rich had said, which is that, you know, we're just here to listen, you know, like you said, we're just here to enjoy the music. But on the opposite side, those, the other people are are making comments similar to like, the fact that art in itself is a very personal product. And as I've talked about before, a number of times, I'm very lyric driven. I write, I love music in regards to the lyrics. I do not play any music, but I know what a good baseline sounds like. But I'm not going, oh shit, track number eight has the tightest bass line. I'm like, track number nine has like the lyrics that I'm pretty sure I wrote myself from like three (laughs) years ago about my breakup. So when you have someone who is accused that is contributing their art to the world in some way, it could be considered uh, or discussed that if the art is coming from a person who engages in foul play, again, I'm doing very legal terms here, (laughs) then that art is tainted with that kind of behavior and that mentality. The lyrics, you know, kind of seep through with some of this, like, and we've talked about this a lot with like pop punk. It's that kind of mentality that you see people like always talk about on like social media, where a guy will be like, what up, babe? Like, you're so fucking hot. Like, I want to get with that. And then you don't respond for 20 minutes. And you're like, you fucking bitch, I'm going to kill you. And you're like, whoa, where did that come from? That to me is like pop punk energy. And these behaviors are usually can be traced back to the people who are writing them. And not saying that every lyricist who writes this way, obviously, is can be accused of anything. But it's, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. Trace it back. You know, especially when an accusation is made, listen to the lyrics, check out the band behavior. You know, is this is it something that's credible or not? You can see it pretty quick. And especially not to single any one time period period (laughs) or genre out. But, you know, it was the 
fucking gonna bury in the backyard type stuff you know where it was like if you don't if i don't have your love no one can and not surprisingly then a number of those bands have had allegations come out about them in the ensuing years so like you said just trace it back to the lyrics like not always but yeah a lot of the time but so as we were talking about you've got a couple different theories of how people handle these things either they completely deny or don't care or they care so much that they 86 them from their entire discography uh from their lives And then there's people in the middle who they find some sort of middle ground. You know, maybe they won't listen to the new stuff after the allegations came out or they don't openly listen to it anymore. I've been I've definitely done that myself. Rich and I actually talked maybe a year or so ago at this point. And I I confess that I like went back and did like a deep dive into like the Ryan Adams discography, like after everything came out and like way after everything came out. And he was like, oh, my God, me too. Well, I didn't do a deep dive, but I I listened to the new record. And now I feel bad. <laughs> no, 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 you shouldn't because I do because I listened to his entire discography and I felt bad after doing so, whether there were like issues or not. Yeah, but no, I listened to one of the new records that came out, and I don't know if it was the record or the fact that all of this stuff had come out, but I was just like, uh, I just feel like gross with this and I don't I don't like it it's kind of like that hindsight thing right like even in going back and listening to some of the the albums and songs knowing what you know it's very hard to when you hear something not think oh shit that's my 2020 hindsight right like there it is I should have caught on to that before I thought that was just like flourished term that he wrote no no that shit's creepy and it's gross like and it comes out as such oh yeah And full disclosure, like, I was a gigantic Ryan Adams fan. Like, I drove with an ex out to Red Rocks to see him play. I flew to Seattle to see him play. Like You, like, followed him like fish. Well, not, no, this was over the course of, like, several years. Did you shower while you were, like, driving across the country in your hippie van to go see Ryan Adams and be sad? No, it's all part of the... (laughs) The musk is part of the experience. (laughs) <laughs> but I had all the records. I had all the bootlegs. You know, yeah, that was a huge artist in my life. And I haven't really listened to him aside from checking out that new album. And a few times when it's like, come on in the background, when I've been out somewhere, I haven't purposely listened to a record of his in over two years. And for Rich and I, we've talked about this before, like both of us are kind of on the the second group that we talked about, the kind of 86 from the life section partially because of the podcast, because of what we know, because of what we do, Mm -hmm. but also because it's just fucking hard to enjoy and and digest music the same way when you know something like that. Because like, you know, with the Ryan Adams example, you don't listen to those things the same anymore. So many people have issues trying to come to terms with someone in a band or an artist assaulting someone. Because, you know, as we've talked about in prior episodes, people think of assault as something that bad people do, right? And as one of our guests mentioned, you know, there's not really bad people, there's bad actions and bad reactions. But if your mentality is, you know, this is a bad thing that bad people do, and you find out that someone that literally is on a platform in front of you the majority of the time you've ever seen them, you automatically have kind of a a heightened sense of point of view of this person. They, through music, are sharing a very intimate aspect of their life. It's so creative and so deeply personal in so many ways. And like I said, you know, as an earlier example, that song was clearly written about, or like I wrote that song like three years ago about my breakup, but it was someone else who wrote it, recorded it, produced it, and put it out into the world. But I swear it's about my breakup from three years ago. That's the beauty of music in so many ways. But that's also kind of the double-edged sword here because it's so hard to detach from the personal aspect that you've imbibed into these songs, into these albums, into these artists, you think that you know them in a certain way because they talk or sing or perform in ways that you look up to or you can relate to. You know, even talking to someone at a merch booth and you just find, like, there's just those times where you're so stoked to see someone live and then you're at the merch booth afterwards and they sell you a shirt and you're just like vibing with them. They just seem cool. 
It's someone that you could totally be friends with, especially in the punk scene, because everyone is like, while there are people who are platformed more than others, everyone's kind of like on the same level. So it's like, there's no way that you couldn't just go to a bar and run into like Chuck Reagan when you're at Fest. I mean, everyone's so accessible. Another sort of hard thing to sort of reconcile is, I'll use a very specific example. Michael Jackson pretty obviously did some horrible things. At the same time, grew up in an abusive home, never really had a childhood. So does that mean if I don't listen to the newer Michael Jackson stuff before he died, do I also have to not listen to the Jackson 5 stuff? Because that little kid didn't do anything. A lot of people had horrible things happen to them as a as a child, and it doesn't forgive what they did later. But, you know, on the other side of things, I've had this argument with people about the Cosby show. And they're like, well, yeah, he was convicted of this stuff now, but like the Cosby show was so important and like all this stuff. It was like, yeah, it was. But while he was making that show, while he was America's father, he was raping and drugging women. Kind of those two examples of the different sides of the coin, you know? Yeah. And kind of as a a third option, I guess, for that, um, you know, we've talked about is the band or the label responsible for the person, you know, who does this? They've seen things. They must know things. They swear that they've never seen things. You know, one thing that Rich and I have talked about before is Lizzo. Absolutely fabulous. I love Lizzo. I think she's phenomenal. Lizzo's made some comments about Drake. Not good. Drake is not good. We do not like Drake. Drake grooms little girls. This is a fact. She also uh, had her picture taken with Chris Brown. Yes. And Lizzo has a DJ. Lizzo's DJ played Harmar Superstar's wedding. That happened in the last few months or so. The Harmar allegations came out over a year and a half ago at this point. And there's a plethora of them. It's not one. It's not that that matters. But it's, it's a group of people who have come forward. So again, is Lizzo complacent? Does she know what's going on? You know, and at that point, I mean, things get really slippery at this point. You know, do you, is the band, should, you know, should the casualties be put through the fucking ringer for what Jorge did so many years ago? They have a new singer. Are they a new band now? Some of the people are the same, right? Is it this good band now? I don't really know. You have to come up with those answers for yourself. And I think that's probably like, the most exhausting part of this episode for everyone is that we're not giving you answers. We're just laying out kind of the different options of what happens when someone's accused. You need to come to terms with what you're okay with on your own. But also what we're asking is that you think about everyone around you. Because when you're platforming someone, when you, and and what does that mean? It means when you continually support someone, when you wear their t-shirt, where you share their music on your social media page, you know, when you go to their shows, When you bring other people to their shows, if a lead singer of a band is accused of rape and you continue to support them, what are you doing in regards to your impact for the scene? Okay, you bring women with you. Let's say it's a male lead singer, straight. What if one of those women gets assaulted? Is that your fault? Not exactly. You didn't do the work, but you brought them to the show. They didn't know about them before that. There's a ripple effect when you continue to support these people after these allegations come forward. And with platforming, especially when you're a straight white male, as we love to talk about, when you continue to support someone who has allegations against them, you are blazing a trail that says this is okay. This person is safe to be around or we don't believe the uh, accuser, the victim, the survivor. You know, we don't believe women. It, It means a lot of things. Your actions mean a lot more than I think a lot of people understand that they do. Uh, So really take some time and consider where you're putting your efforts and who you're putting your time and your money into. I know we've talked about this a lot before on the podcast, but there's a lot of bands out there with a lot of amazing, talented artists, and they are not getting their fair fucking share. It's almost like, you know, not that I want to keep bringing up capitalism. I feel like I bring this up like every episode or at least like every day, just in my overall talk. But like you have like a top 1% of people who are making all the money, running all the businesses, and ruining the motherfucking planet. It's very similar in music. There is a top tier number of people who are getting all the tours, international and national, bussing around, selling all the merch or whatever. And then you've got a whole bunch of tiny little bands. We can call them startup companies 
or whatever we would like to call them, mom and pop stores, and they need your business. They need it. They're hungry for it. And they're good fucking people. Whereas the people on the top might be fucking around a little bit. Maybe they hurt somebody. Maybe they did something that doesn't align with your morals. There are other bands to look for than the Big Ten up there. There are other labels to look for than the ones that monopolize all of the social media feed. And I might not know anyone that Ryan Adams has assaulted or harassed, but I know plenty of women who have been assaulted and harassed and by members of bands. And I know how they would feel if I continued to listen to or platform someone in a band who assaulted them. So I can apply that knowledge when it comes to other people. If one of my best friends was assaulted by Ryan Adams and I continued to talk about him all the time and play his music and, you know, how would that make her feel? It's Not really great. triggering to have to hear totally. the name or the music of someone who has abused you or assaulted you or raped you or whatever you want to call it. It hits you on a level that I think is different. Again, maybe it's just because music to me means so much more than movies. Sorry, Rich. Um, or anything else but like it's just it's so much more personal and so to hear something so personal after something so personal was taken from you gets you in a deeper more fucked up way than i think just running into someone on the street if you're not ready to completely like nix them from your life which is totally understandable like you're it's it's not Human nature is so fucked up and interesting. And doing this podcast makes me think about so much stuff in ways that I never normally would, which is great for all of us, I think, hopefully. And hopefully I can convey it properly. From what we saw with COVID, from what we know in general, people are very self-involved, very me first mentality, right? So like, if make sure that you're safe before anyone else. Well, this person didn't abuse me. So why the fuck do I care? Like, I like their music. I don't want to deprive myself of this thing that's enjoying, that is enjoyment to me. But when someone's wife, daughter, son, whatever it is, gets involved, then those people tend to change their tune. When they have a daughter, when they have kids, all of a sudden things start to come become more real for people when things that had never entered the periphery or scope before start to enter the sidelines and they have to start thinking about things in a very different way. One of the things to think about if you're not ready to completely remove someone, you know, after an allegation is that humans are very habitual and they like to push the envelope. If they can get away with something once, they're going to keep pushing and trying. That's how a lot of these situations have happened. I personally have had an experience where someone went from, you know, point A to like point D with me and I got really uncomfortable and removed myself from the situation. Two years later, I was speaking to someone. She came forward and told me that this same person went from point A to actually raping her. And that's where I thought I was at when I removed myself. And when we, she, I didn't say anything to her. She told me the list of things that had happened in the order that she remembered them. And as we know, trauma is not always chronological or in order. It's the same moves, the same fucking comments. They try and try and try until they get what they're looking for, what the end goal, whatever it is. And once they succeed, that's the formula until the next time. So if you're not at the point where you want to remove this person or people, band, artist, label, whatever it is from your life, just keep your eyes open. You know, don't just completely throw out what the person had said. Just file that somewhere away and watch. I've done that myself before I'm just became zero to 60, believe victims, no matter what they say, fuck everyone else, like everyone else is lying kind of situation which I'm in now because you have to be um, these days and probably all days. But I I would file away information and then you would start to notice things when those people were around you, especially if it's in a local scene. You know, you're starting to see them make comments, you know, touch people in certain ways. Just stay aware. And that's kind of this whole thing is that this is a scene. This is a group. This is a community. That's what we call it, right? So why are we not standing up for each other? Why are we not looking out for each other? You don't have to do anything by any specific book when you find out that somebody has been accused of something. It's up to you, obviously, how you want to handle this. But please be very aware that your comments and your actions and your reactions affect everyone around you when you're in a tight-knit community. And any support that you give somebody, it radiates. 
it ripples like we talked about to kind of wrap this up uh we'll go back to kendra's capitalism idea tattoo artists are able to decline customers if they want something some sort of like racist or sexist symbol or homophobic symbol on their body because they they can it's their business it's their right they can refuse to tattoo swastikas on people or um you know fuck women i don't know if anyone would get that tattoo people would absolutely get that tattoo i don't know why i just said that like there are definitely guys out there i like hearing you come saying it and then instantaneously coming to the realization like there's a man out there with fuck women tattooed on his chest for sure absolutely but if they can make those decisions based on their personal beliefs why can't we as music lovers music fans make those same decisions to not buy records by artists who are racist, sexist, homophobic, have allegations against them of sexual misconduct, choose not to go to those shows, not stream their music. It's no different. And here's the thing. Kendra and I might not always agree on which artists should be completely taken out of circulation in in our personal collections. I'm not saying like, never listen to another David Bowie record, anyone, anywhere, ever, delete all of the albums. But in your personal life, if you choose not to, that's fine. If you choose to, that's fine. But don't continue to listen to the music just because you feel like, well, I don't want to censor an artist for their art because of what they did in their personal life. There's no there's no separation of art and artist when there are real human victims on the other side and we've talked about this before there's a body count behind this stuff when you continue to support and platform it if that's what you want to do that's fine but you have to reconcile with that and if you don't want to that's fine too don't feel like you have to continue listening to them just because you don't want to give in to peer pressure or whatever and and when we're talking about i mean any band really But think about it on a larger scale, right? A band who tours for money. This is what they do. This is their main job. Okay? That's their job. If I was at my place of employment and I sexually harassed five people, I would not be working at that place of employment anymore. Would I go to another place of employment? Maybe they'd let me in, but they'd probably call my last job and find out that I sexually harassed people apparently on some sort of chronic level. (laughs) Like... You know, this is this is their job. They're going around the country. And that's I think that's another thing we need to bring up too. They travel, right? Musicians travel for a living. If they're full-time, full-on musicians, they are going cross state lines on a regular basis. If an artist has tendencies to assault people, they are basically driving a creeper van across the country with the ability to assault people without, I mean, they're leaving the body count, like Rich was saying. They just don't, they don't even stay. They go from town to town, you know? So it's just something to be considered. If this is their job, would you act this way at your job? No, probably not. Hopefully not. Would you stay at your job? Would they let you stay if you did this? Probably not. And I'm talking to the labels at this point that say, I don't know what to do about this here. Like, this is your employee. You vouched for them. You vouched for their art. If you're supporting them still, then you're keeping the guy who grabs butts in the break room on your fucking staff because he's good at doing payroll and brings in a fucking paycheck for you. That's what you're dealing with here. That's when things become capitalistic. That's when things become, you know, monetary over human fucking life. And that's from what I was always envisioning. That's not what this scene's supposed to be about. And when I worked customer service as a manager, every year I had to take a corporate mandated sexual harassment class should we make bands do this at labels then like do they have to do like a two-hour training like i have to do every year for my management i was just gonna say (laughs) why isn't there something like that i mean there shouldn't have to be anything like that for any of us because so much of that stuff is such common sense but apparently not because we still had to take it every year so what makes us different than them where Not only do they get away with stuff like that, a lot of times they are celebrated for being excessive and sex, drugs, and rock and roll. This whole punk, I don't give a fuck, I'm trash mentality. Totally. Yeah. It's supposed to be dangerous. It's supposed to scare you. 
you can be trash. It doesn't mean you need to make me feel like trash. Yeah. Times change. Music scenes can change also. You know, it's not the 1980s. People are not bringing switchblades to Suicidal Tendencies shows. All we're asking for is that you are very cognizant of your reaction to that. Do you need to completely throw all, you know, throw all their shit in the trash? Not if you don't feel like that's necessary, but if you do, that's your way. You know, if you say, fuck it, and I'm in denial or I don't give a fuck, like really spend some time and think about why though. And like what that reaction's really doing. No one's asking you to lobotomize this band from your brain and the life that you've lived with them being so important to you. But there's a time and place for everything to have a sunset. And if finding out that, you know, someone has been a serial, like like we talked about, the guy in HR has been a serial butt grabber. I think it's time for Robert to maybe lose his job. He can go find a job somewhere else outside of our community. Because also when we're talking about here, is we're, we're talking about a very tight, close-knit community, right? And while I don't want to, like, send people out into the world saying, like, fuck all, but our job it's our job to keep ourselves safe. Enough is a podcast centering on abuse, harassment, and assault in the music scene. To help get the word out, please like or subscribe and share with your friends. If you have been on the receiving end of harm from someone, be it artist, venue owner, audience member, or someone else, and would like to share your story on a future episode, please reach out to us at thisisenoughpodcast at gmail.com. All correspondences are kept confidential.